My name is William H. Dove. I'm in charge of Oscar's Mortuary. It's a family business that started here in New Bern, North Carolina, under this name of Oscar's Mortuary in 1960. Okay. Uh, my father started his business in 1950 when he first became an, a funeral director. And uh, <clears throat> I fought, trying to follow in his footsteps, I, I was a bit lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to work a lot. And my ambition was to become a lawyer, but uh, at that time when I finished high school, my father told me he couldn't afford to send me to college because at that time they had just split. Okay. And he and his father had split up and we came over here. So he said he couldn't afford to send me to college. I'd have to go to embalming school, but that was only one year. And I did my apprenticeship here and went off to New York to embalming school. And uh, that's how I got started. But I've been here all my life, working in the embalming room before I ever had driver's license, <laughs> working me to death. Okay. And we have tried several things. We had a service station, like this entrepreneurship. That's all we've ever done. I've traveled in New York, done so many things to sell clothes. I like working for myself. Okay. I don't want to work for other people. Okay. And at my age now, I'll be 76 October the 19th, and I'm still trying to sell three tombstones today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything to make me a buck. Okay. And, uh, well, I guess you pretty son. much answered the second question, which is what made you decide to be an entrepreneur yeah. um, and how long you've been in this business. And, so, and then my father, as a, as a child, okay. my father used to sell sweet potatoes, white potatoes, and I'd go down there and help him. Okay. And uh, as coming back one day from Pampico County, mm -hmm. there were two turtles. So he stopped to pick the turtles up. And I wonder what was he going to do this for? He put the turtles on the back of the truck. We got to Rice's Creek. And he was selling the potatoes and the beans and everything. Mm -hmm. And there was took the two turtles to the lady because she wanted to eat turtle soup. Wow. <laughs> And she bought the turtles. Wow. So there was nothing that my father wouldn't see. Okay. And just yesterday I came from the hospital, and there was a 40-foot chain on the highway, so I stopped and picked it up. And the people were saying, why are you stopping to pick that mm -hmm. up, man? You stopping traffic. Well, that chain was $200. So I put it in my car. Anything there is, my sons get at me right now for picking up stuff on the highway. <laughs> but this young lady that I'm talking to, her family and my family have been together ever since we were kids. And we've all worked hard. Her father, her granddaddy, they all work for themselves. And that's where we were brought up. Okay. I like working for myself. All right. And the funeral business, I guess, getting a little toll on me now because my knees getting <laughs> weak, my hips getting weak, and I can't do this lifting. But okay. I have two sons here, and I'm grateful for them. And a little, uh, 15, no, 12 months, 12 months, two weeks. Oh, old. wow. Grandson. Okay, that's awesome. That, uh, I hope to see him go to first grade anyway. Oh, hey, you might see him coming in here to work. Yeah. Okay. And I have another little grandson that's 11. He was here and worked with us all this summer. He loves it and wants to come back. Unfortunately, I had to come through um, this summer when we had someone pass in our family, and that young man chauffeured us around. He walked us up. I said, do you work here as well? Yeah. So, all certainly. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And he okay. loves it. He did. He was pleasant. Um, he provided the utmost customer service to us. Yeah. He was very, very nice. That's who I want my little grandson, the little one. Okay. To, to be around because he can really train. Okay. And that's important. Yes, that's right. Okay. So for our next question, what was or what is the most important factor in building your brand? Um, how have you guys created awareness about yourself and your product? And since it's a family business, I guess... All of you would technically be um, responsible for creating that right. awareness and maintaining your product. Mm -hmm. The main thing about uh, maintaining your product is being nice to people. Okay. It's not just that you're in business to make money. 
because everybody don't pay you. Mm -hmm. And so those that come here that do not have any money, we don't refuse anybody. I don't, and as long as I'm here, they're not going to. Okay. And I don't think any of my sisters or my children would do that. Because that's the thing in life. Everybody doesn't have it. You have to be here mm -hmm. to help people. Okay. And that's what it's all about. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, in relation to your overall goals, what matters more? Um, we have been working in class with Noam Wasserman's The Founder's Dilemmas. So this book entails and pretty much details not everything but a lot of the things that entrepreneurs run into whether the risks are known or unknown he details a lot of the variables that cause um, entrepreneurs to fail so one of the discussions that he has in the book is okay for instance when you're starting out a business would you rather maintain control or would you be more worried about the profits if you had to bring in a partner, would you let them maintain some of that control and you worry about the profits, or would you rather maintain control and worry less about those profits? Mm, I would, if I bought in a, a partner, mm -hmm. I would rather see both of us maintain control and you work with each other to see. Okay. That's a good answer. Yeah. And uh, I like... Uh, But if you got fears, fear is the greatest thing about going into business now. People fear the fear of not making it, mm -hmm. losing money. And I have uh, lost over $40,000 in, in other things that I've tried. And my mother said once to me, I hope Sonny doesn't kill himself. <laughs> Really? Right. When 9 11 was. Because mm -hmm. I have done a lot of aggressive <laughs> investing. Mm -hmm. And my investment guy told me, say, nigga, you need to change some of this stuff. And I mm -hmm. didn't. And I lost a lot of money. And so. Okay. It didn't bother me. I said, well, you know, this mm -hmm. was just one I was trying to make. Right. So I'll get here. So you're saying with uh, entrepreneurship, one of the keys is to be fearless. You can't have any fear in your That's heart right. when you're starting a business. That's right. You got to know that there are going to be some unknowns. There's going to be some risk. It yes. might be some failures, but That's right. you got to hang you in there. You got to keep on going. Okay. All right. Well, one of the most important questions for me, I have interviewed two other individuals, and everyone has sort of had the same answer to this question, but I feel like you are going to have a different answer. Um, number five says, statistics show that businesses associated with friends and family members in various roles oftentimes fail or add additional unnecessary tensions over the course of the project. Do you agree or disagree? Because this is a family business. Um, in case we business. have not told you guys, uh, could you tell everyone um, who in your family exactly works at this business? Okay. My sister next to me, Dorothy. Okay. She's a workaholic. <laughs> Don't have to worry about anything going to go wrong. Okay. Because she's going to protect our families that we serve. Because if there's one penny over that I charge them or we charge, she's going to go back and check over everybody that sold a family. Okay. So that's your checks and balances. Yeah, she's going to check and All see right. if we didn't charge them enough or if we charged them too much. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. And, uh. Next. Okay. What was the next question? Oh, who's the next person in your family? We were okay. naming all the family members okay. that are associated. Eileen, my okay. sister Eileen Dub. Uh, she's kind of front person like me. Mm -hmm. And she has a lot of mouth and a lot of gab. Everybody <laughs> likes her. Right. And She's uh, very pleasant. My daughter, very quiet. Mm -hmm. She works hard here. My two sons, they're both licensed funeral directors and embalmers. Okay. The same as I am. And one of them went to North Carolina Central, Victor. His wife went to Central. Julian, he just went to March. He went to Federal Tech and the Mortuary School. And me, I just went to Mortuary School. Okay. Okay. I didn't go to any college. Okay. But I really wanted to go. Okay. I've done a lot of reading and everything, you know. I just love people.
You know, that's something else interesting. Out of the three entrepreneurs that I met today, um, each one of you has talked about education and talked about the importance of educating yourself, whether you're in school or whether, you know, it's a lifelong journey. So, yes, okay, I also uh, noted I spoke with Miss Sabrina Bingle earlier and she also talked about the importance of education and she had not finished her degree, but I was explaining to someone she has made some tremendous moves in New Bern. So I would never have known that she didn't have a college degree. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, I have certainly learned and certainly have a totally different perspective on whether or not you have that title or, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not you've gone to college, because certainly I think being an entrepreneur, you can learn so many different things that are not mm -hmm. teachable in classrooms. And my next move I'm trying to do now is lease some acres of land. Okay. I thought I had these lands already leased to my cousin and them, my cousins down in Hollow. Oh, they leased their land, and so the people weren't leasing it this year. And so I tried to lease the 70 acres for the same amount that they were getting paid every year, $1,500. And I was going to do some hemp farming. Oh, okay. And that's when I, I already got two acres on the start, man. Okay. Me and my sons, my sons and I. I've been reading about that. <laughs> I've been reading a lot about um, hemp farming and uh, just the different uh, legislatures that they're trying to pass right. for um, for farmers, for the CBD oils, for the different yes. things that um, hemp can provide. So that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well. That's what I'm going to try need. Okay. That's, hey, that's a good thing. Yeah. So the last part of that question was essentially, do you think it's easier to hire staff who are fundamentally strangers or would you prefer to fill in business roles with available family members and friends? I would prefer, I would, if I, right now, if I had to hire someone, mm -hmm. I would like to hire someone that knew how to embalm well, knew how to sell well, and knew how to treat people. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, I want to try to keep them around here from New Bern. People, friends. Right. Okay. Because, you know, this is uh, my whole life. Right. You can't help the people around you, you know. Okay. It's bad. That sounds good. Well, the last question is, how do you maintain business equilibrium? What are some business practices that facilitate you in doing so? How does everything around here, how is everything maintained? How does everything managed? Um... I am 32 years old, and in my 32 years of living in New Bern, I can pretty much say that you guys dominate the funeral market. Um, if anyone has someone that passes away in, they fa in their family, especially for our African-American community, we predominantly know that they're going. Them to, oh, I understand, because I've seen it. Yeah. Um, I yeah, think that. both. Right? I've seen Why that. Um, right. I, I saw recently, um, I'll go on your websites and check, and I know that you guys went to St. Paul, so you have a lot of other connections, not in the African-American community. Right. But you guys have done a tremendous job in Craven County and New Bern, North Carolina specifically. Carter, with in Carteret. In Carteret, Carteret also? Jones, yes. Okay. We have a funeral down in there. Oh, okay. Lady. Okay. We're having a funeral up here at our chapel, and then we're going to bury her there. But she's from Beaufort, North Carolina. Okay. And my wife is from both North Carolina. Okay. And uh, my brother-in-law, he's an entrepreneur. They started, my wife's father started a business, Teal's Gas, back in the 50s and the 60s. And they do over five and six million dollars a year. That's awesome. That's his three, his two sons, one, two, three sons and the father run the business and the mother does the office work. Okay. Well, it's very interesting to speak with you about a family business. Um, again, the investors, entrepreneurs that I met with earlier uh, pretty much told me they would not go into business with their family. They wouldn't go into business with friends. Um, they said that one of them was talking about how the businesses that they have been building, uh, they want to maintain control over them. They don't want to put anyone else at the helm, and they certainly don't want to just feel like they're giving something away to their kids. Right. They want them to work for it just as hard as they did. So what would you say about that? Well, I had told my children and told my sisters, we need to sell this business to the kids, to my kids, but they don't have any kids. Take the money, put it in the bank. When we leave here, they'll still have the money. 
if it's not for Ava. I understand. Okay. And that's what I want to do. My boys tell me, but if you're going to sell us something, we might well go and find us another job. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, they have put in some work around here. Oh, yeah, but they've been getting paid all their life. <laughs> I was 27 years old before I got the first real check. I well, just got what it had. I think that one of the good things, of though, us. is especially for your sons, is to be able to be around entrepreneurs. A lot of people aren't exposed to yeah. people who make moves like that or, as you said, who have that fearlessness to do so. Oh, yeah, so, they, and they're always trying to do something, too. And they made more money than I have. And that's a good thing. That That's what I want to build for my family, generational wealth. Okay. I want to be able to lay my head down and know that even after I'm gone, my family will still be all right. And it's because of the things that I put into place yeah. while I was here. That's right. And any more information you want to give us about Oscar's Mortuary? Oh, uh, well, we were the first funeral home that went across a ferry with a funeral down in this area. Oh, wow. Took a whole funeral across the ferry. <laughs> and what? Um, and we were bombed back in the, by Ku Klux Klan. Wow. Yeah. So you guys have a lot of history here. Yeah. Okay. What's the actual address here? 1700 Oscars Drive. Oscars Drive. So you have a street named after you. Yeah, well, this street here used to be Pembroke Road. And when they put the bypass in, they cut it off. So they gave us this part. That okay. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, again. And we were flooded last year with the, uh, what's that haunt? That's Florence. 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 That's right. First time that we've ever been flooded over here. Yeah, and Florence took a toll on New Bern. I've been coming in this area where the funeral home is uh, since I was eight or nine years old. And no water has ever flooded this area before. Okay. But we were flooded last year. Had about 12 inches of water to come down the stairs. And we had to change the all the carpets, our pews, and what have you. Okay. But we survived, and we're going to keep on. All right. Well, we're going to close out on that because I think that's a good note. Thank you for your okay. time. All right, baby. As I said before, and time I is love, money. And I love you. I love you more.